advances in technology influencing multimedia, processing power of CPUs. Now, what we're talking about here is basically the information process of processing and essentially the increased power of central processing unit allows for larger amounts of data to be processed at a time and turned into information. So the more processing power we have, the more processing we can do. And this all comes down to the CPU, which is mentioned as the brain of the system. Okay, so the more power we have there, the smarter our system is, the more it can do at a time. The CPU is considered this brain, and as such, it is related to the foundation information process of processing from which the other information processes can be enabled. So here is our CPU. It's a little chip that sits on the motherboard and through the bus lines and through the ports that are on the motherboard, it's connected to every other component of the system. Okay, we also have uh, our wireless card too that is also connecting processing th through wireless mediums on networks. So let's go through how it affects all the other information processes at a very basic level and within the context of multimedia systems. So firstly is the information process of collecting. So the speed of data collection, the types of data that can be collected and the ways data can be collected. So let's just think about that. Obviously, if speed makes sense, it should make sense to you off the top of your head. But the types of data that can be collected. So we could be talking about movement data. If we're talking about um, virtual reality systems, and um, obviously this goes into the ways data can be collected as well. Gesture-based movement, okay? Data can be collected in that way, but obviously there's much more variables that need to be processed to collect that data. So the better processing power of the CPU, the more types of data that can be collected when collecting data for our multimedia systems. Next is organization, dynamic ways of arranging data. Essentially, this is so data can be set up in a certain way for obviously deeper processing. And we've talked about in IPT before, data warehousing systems that can be set up dynamically for the next information process of analyzing in which we use data mining tools in order to go through that data. And so we will move on to analyzing now and essentially the speed that data is analyzed, okay? The smarter our process is, the faster data can be analyzed. And then obviously the amount of data that can be analyzed at a time, the multi-processing um, factor of our actual CPU. After analysis, okay, we'll look at storage and retrieval. And here in the context of multimedia systems, a big one is the compression file, okay, for storage. The fact that we can compress data when it's not in use, okay, and obviously store it, okay, on our hard drives at a much smaller file size. That compression process being done, obviously, at a faster rate, okay, and then in return, the speed of retrieving files, okay, when we want to bring them back. And we'll talk about that when we get to displaying. Okay, the next one is transmitting and receiving. Once again, the speed and data that can be sent and received at a time. If we're going to talk about multimedia systems, once again, let's look at gaming. Okay, when you're playing your online games, the fact that you're playing with people all over the world, but it's seamless. Okay, that is the fact that your system, your console or your PC has a good processor inside that can read this data, put it up for display, you can respond as the user, and then it transmits it back to this networked game. And then finally is displaying. Okay, the decompression of files for display. Okay, so they've been compressed while they've been um, stored, but then we want them to decompress when we're actually using them, edi editing them, viewing them, whatever, so we can view them at their highest quality. Okay, higher frame rates. Okay, so the amount of frames per second. Okay, we all want to see when we're playing our gaming, our 60 frames per second. It gets annoying when things dip to 30 frames per second because we can see that jitteriness of the game, the jaggedness, which we can find frustrating. And so if it goes any lower on that, that's just unacceptable. Okay, so maintaining higher frame rates. But then also in maintaining that, we're also using monitors that have higher resolutions. Okay, so that's more pixels within each frame that the, the CPU needs to process as well. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of the advances in technology in relation to the processing power of CPUs, that it is fundamentally the hardware that is controlling all the other information processes. And as I said before, through the motherboard, the bus lines on the motherboard, the actual um, ports that uh, connect external components and the wireless card connecting wireless components, it is obviously processing data from all these different elements and giving different outputs.